we won't worry about that. God bless you. God bless you. It's Hampley III, Pastor Village Hills Fellowship. I want to welcome you to our Wednesday Bible study. I've been playing around with my little hobby, so I have not done anything. <laughs> I don't know where my Bibles are, nothing. Yolanda tried to ask me, but I was like, ah, oh, well, we start now. All right, today we're going to get back into living for the kingdom, right? So we've been teaching living for the kingdom. Let me find where that book is. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about living for the kingdom. Living for the kingdom provides 115 lessons based on the commands of Jesus, and this is in, in fulfillment of his great commission in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Amen. God had told me to return back to it because I was going to do another longer lesson. And Lord willing, we'll get into it. I wanted to really address trauma and our ability to kind of deal with it and address the trauma in our life because of various traumas that we experience. We wind up, we respond to it differently to try to cope or some of us seek some type of dopamine, right, from some of the actions from the trauma, right, trying to get away from it so I may enter into other things. So I wanted to talk about that, but God's like, Hamp, just, you know, where are you at in life? You need to just go back to the message. So we'll get back in the message. And then uh, Sunday is Father's Day, so I'll be in... I'll be, I'll have a Father's Day message. If you know me, you know it won't be, it won't be the, the standard. It won't be the standard. I, I will promise you that. Well, if it stays the way it is, it's, the, it's not going to be the standard. So God bless you. I pray that you're doing well. What's up, Marlon? I pray that you're doing well. We just, I just went looking at, we looked at some houses for our LLC. And so I was trying to put together a little social media video. I was working on that before we got into this. But going back to the lesson, we're, we're in lesson 69. This is forgiving others. I'll go through the lesson. I'll provide a little bit of commentary. So, oh, I didn't provide a link for the book. Hold on. I forgot to do that. Let me uh, let me go to notes because it's on page 99. So in case one of you want to download it, I'm sorry. Y'all, I apologize. I didn't put it in the main notes. So let me, I'm, I'm, we're in Zoom, so I'm going to put it in Zoom, as well as the program that I use to show live is called Ecamm for Mac. So I put a link to it. Yeah, that's the, that should be the book. Mm, okay, that should be the book. So page 99, we'll try to get through real quick. I'll provide a little bit of commentary. We'll be here for a couple weeks, so it provides a couple, I guess, some perspectives. And today... Today's perspective is one that I've been in Christ since 97 and I've never seen done in a church ever. So, and I, I don't know what to say to that, but I've never seen it done, but let's get into the word and then we'll grow from there. Amen. Uh, let's get into it. Let me get, let me make sure I got the scriptures right. So lesson I'm going to read primarily from Matthew 18, 15 to 17, and then I believe Lesson 70, if I'm not mistaken, Lesson 70 will cover Matthew 18, uh, 30, 21 to 35. So I think that's what it is. Yes, yes, it does. It, it does cover that. So today's lesson is more of, I haven't seen that done in church, but there is a way to be able to address things. And, and so I, I would definitely want to talk about that. Amen. And please, if you have a question, comment, concerns, please feel free to answer, to ask. All right. With that, let's go into the word. Let's go into a word of prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for the day you've given us, Lord God. I thank you for this time that you have allowed for us, Lord, just to study your word. Open our hearts and minds, Lord God, to receive your word, Lord God. May we not be distracted. May we allow it to be settled in good crown, the word that we receive, that we may take this word and we may go forth, Lord God, that will grow a bountiful harvest from our hearts, Lord God, to edify ourselves and others. Father, we love you and we bless you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, so in Matthew, so Matthew 18, verses 15 to 17, it says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou have gained thy brother. 
But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be to thee as a heathen man and a publican. So, as I said before, if you've seen this in your church, please let me know. But I have never seen this ever come about in church where, hey, God bless you, Sister Rose, praise you, doing well. I've never seen this in church where someone came forward and says, I have an alt or a situation between me and another person. They have offended me. I have addressed it to them. They said nothing. I went to two more people. They, I brought two more people in. And they still said nothing. Now I bring it to the church. I've never seen it before. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't use it. Amen. It doesn't mean that this isn't what we should do. Because God, Jesus is giving us instruction on how to deal with certain issues. Because when we look back at the scripture. When a lot of people tra transgress against us or sin against us. How many times would, do, we, do we address it? to a certain person how many times do we sit silently and stew over what they said I know I'm one how many times do we repeat a matter right how many times in Proverbs it talks about this right when we begin to repeat a matter Right. Let's go to Proverbs 17 and 9 real quick, because I want to show the difference about how we often deal with situations and when people offend us. And in our society, not everyone is confrontational and I won't call it confrontation, but to confront someone about what they said or did or did to us. So then a lot of us find ourselves angry about a situation, angry about what someone has done, and all we do is hold. We hold it in. <clears throat> so in Proverbs 17 and 9, let me come back in the program. So Proverbs 17 and 9, it says, He that covers a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separates very friends. So then, if, if I can break this down, we'll, we'll even go down to, we can go to the Amplified. We can go somewhere else. But it says, in the Amplified, it says, he who covers and forgives an offense seeks love. But he who repeats or gossips about a matter separates intimate friends. Now, let's break this verse down real quick, y'all. How many of us, so I would say by a show of hands, <laughs> how many of us, when we are offended, Do we immediately go to seek to restore a relationship? A lot of times, and especially on what it is, we will not. We will do the latter. We will repeat the matter in two places. Number one, we repeat the matter to ourselves. We begin to tell the story, rewind it in our minds again and again and again. If I'm lying, somebody tell me that I'm lying. Somebody, somebody be like, I ain't never did that. If that's you, put it all here. I ain't never did that before. I've never repeated a wrong that somebody did to me in my mind. I never thought about it again and again, how they hurt me, how they ignored me, trampled on my feelings left me for dead, didn't care nothing about me. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all thinking about something right now. Somebody hurt you. Oftentimes, y'all, we spend years, decades, repeating what someone did to us. 
we won't seek love because what we think about it is that that person should be seeking love because they wronged me. They out here living their best life. They forgot that they offended me and they don't seem to care. And they in the streets living their life as if they've never done anything to me. I got a problem with that. You the one left me on the side of the road, hurt, wounded, mad, stressed, angry, whatever it is. I shouldn't be seeking nothing. Come on, y'all. Don't tell me I'm the only one that's ever done that. I shouldn't be seeking love. They should be seeking me out for what they've done. I should be getting a phone call. Get off my phone. Let me let me make sure the line clear right back in the day, right? When you only had one line, right? Keep the line open because they need to be calling. I'm looking for a text because they owe me. Come on, y'all. How many times do we act like that? We won't seek out love from a person who's offended us. We won't seek to, we won't talk to them. Jesus says it. We ain't seeking love and restitution. We're not, see, a lot of times forgiveness is for, for you. A lot of people that do this stuff, they, they don't, and honestly, sometimes some people may offend you and they don't really understand the depth of what they've done. They don't, they don't understand it. You're left wounded, angry, mad, upset. And they may honestly don't even know. So when you're looking at them, they're like, they're living their best life. They doing this, blah, 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 blase, blase. They don't, they may not even know. And then on the flip side of that, they may not even care. So, and, then, and there's other instances where they don't care. They, they, they said what they said, right? How many people you've heard said that? I said what I said. I meant it. What you going to do about it? So, that makes you feel some kind of way. So we've read two scriptures. And Jesus has shared a way for us to address it. Proverbs speaks about how to address it. We address it because we want to seek love. I want to seek unity. I want to seek harmony. That's my desire. And if harmony for nobody else is for me, because how many of these situations have we had sleepless nights over? How many of these situations, some of us have gained weight. Some of us, you experience some type of trauma. I'm an emotional eater, right? I'm eating my way, you know, to trying to get that dopamine Right, I'm trying to get that response where, where I, I'm soothing myself through food. Some of us soothe ourselves through television or illicit sex and alcohol, drugs, all type of things. Come on, y'all. When at the root of the matter lies unforgiveness and an unresolved situation because of some trauma. Sometimes because of trauma, sometimes because of unforgiveness. There could be other things too. I know I'm not the only person. I'm in that situation now, like during the pandemic, right? I gained like almost 30 pounds. I'm t I was like 262, 261. M my max for the military is 236. We had a problem. Houston, there's a problem. Right now, I'm probably like 224. And that had to be some work. We'll talk about that in a while. There's a lot of work that had to go in to that. God told me I need to get down to 215 before I retire. Right? So we 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 on the we on the down we on the downslide here. But in a lot of that, I had to address some of those emotional issues that I had within to identify them. That there are some areas that because they're unaddressed, they're not addressed, there's some unforgiveness there. I'm creating problems for myself. See that? Because I won't address the pain that I'm experiencing. It affects me. It, the other person is not even affected. Let's go to Proverbs 17, 22, right? Just a little bit down. See, you think about this in a lot of situations, that situation of unforgiveness is not even bothering the other person. 
Think about what unforgiveness is doing to you right now. Think about what it, how much time is stolen from you. How many happy moments and memories you could have, relationships that have been destroyed because somebody else over here, over there somewhere, hurt you, somebody in your past that's not even in your past no more. Some of those people are even dead. They've been dead and gone for years. But the pain that they caused you still exists today. And because of that pain, you hurt people. Hurting people hurt people. Come on, somebody. I've been there too. Where I've hurt people because somebody hurt me. Because something was unresolved in my life. I've taken it out on other people. So let's go to Proverbs 17, 22. A happy heart. I'm reading from the Amplified. A happy heart. Hold on. Is it? Hold on. So in Proverbs 17, 22, it says a happy heart is good medicine and a joyful mind causes healing. Come on, y'all. Let me add this to the broadcast. Look at that. A happy heart is good medicine and a joyful mind causes healing. But a broken spirit drives up the bones. Y'all, a lot of us are kept from the abundant life that Jesus wants to give. Let's go to John 10 and 10. Hold, hold, hold your place in John 10 and 10. A lot of us are kept from the abundant life that Jesus came to give simply because we choose not to forgive. We choose not to seek forgiveness. And, it, and, and Jesus was saying in this situation, in this area, it ain't even seeking forgiveness. Forgiveness is rebuking somebody for what they did. Hey, this is what you did to me. Right? I'm addressing, I'm, I'm taking a moment to address it instead of me holding all of this in. How many times we held it in? It's killing you. It's killing me because of the pain and trauma that I've experienced. Dude, I've been pre-diabetic. Come on, y'all. My health has been declining. I'm being drained, tired. I'm eating all kind of crazy stuff. I have no business eating. You think about illicit relationships. Come on. You want to you want to have illicit relationships. See, my issue was 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 women. Right? So I want to enter into an illicit relationship that it gives me a moment of peace to so that I ain't thinking about the pain that I'm going through. Some people do that with drugs. Some people do that with alcohol. I just need a moment to escape the reality that I'm facing. Come on, y'all. Many of us are in that same boat. And we live like this for years. Some of us have childhood trauma that's not addressed. And it's killing us. See, let's go to John 10 and 10. John 10 and 10 to Amplify says that the thief comes only in, in order to steal and kill and destroy. He says, I came, this is what Jesus said, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Now, let me break this down to you. When you think about this abundant life to the full, when you in Christ, you're going to go through some tribulation. So it doesn't mean the absence of, it's in spite of, in spite of what I'm going in. And this is where I'm at right now, because this is where I want to be with, with Yolanda in my relationship with her, right? God's given me this wonderful, godly woman. I want to enjoy my wife. I want to enjoy my family. I want to, I want, I tr like, we like battling like right now, like right now, man, I tell you when the testimony come up, y'all gonna be like, man, how is y'all still living? How is y'all still preaching or doing anything <laughs> right now? How, how somebody in jail right now? Because <laughs> we just talked about that. <laughs> we were just joking around about that a few minutes ago. 
Like how somebody, why, how y'all do it, right? Because of Jesus. But there are days when you 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 feel the weight, you get tired, you got to go back and, and release some things back to the Lord. And I have to continually do a heart check on myself. Like where am I at? And how am I treating the people that continually offend me? That continually do things to me? Because there are some people that do things to you and they don't care, right? They don't apologize, you rebuke them, you do whatever, right? It's like it's like flatline, like dee, like there, like there is there a, a, a heart that's in there? Is there a heart in there? You know, like like the Tin Man, like is there something in there or the Grinch? Right? Is there something a little heart in there? It can't be. The person's heartless. That, that's how you feel sometimes. But what do I do to address situations? Jesus is telling you how to address a situation, and the way that we don't address it is by doing nothing. Unless you've given it to God and you moved on. That, that's a whole nother story. I, Lord, I give it to you. I move on. That's a whole different message, right? I, I lay these things at your feet. I'm talking about for us, for us, this is like for some of us that's, that's on here and we hold on to this thing. There's been situations. There's been a situation this week. It's not even this situation I've been thinking about. It's not even, it bothers me, but it's not offense, but it is a very trying situation and one that angers me. And I've been thinking about it a lot and I probably need to not think about it as much as I'm thinking about this. It's not related to unforgiveness, but we do need to take time, right? As second Corinthians 13, five talk about examine yourself to see if you're in a faith, but really just to do a heart check to see where you're at. Where am I at right now? How am I treating people? And most most importantly, how am I treating people that have offended me? And what am I doing to address it? Am I going to the person and saying, hey, you know, like I said, some of these people don't even know they did anything to you. If you told them, they'd be like, man, I, man I'm sorry, man, my bad. I didn't even know. A lot of the people would. Some of the people that you've been mad about, mad with for years, if you just went to them and talked to them, ask, and this is what you do, y'all. Ask God, for opportunity or the right time to address it, or even if you should. Like, Lord, should I even address this? There may be some situations God's like, nope, don't address this. This isn't worth addressing right now. There are some other situations where God is saying, you know what, I need you to address it, but I want you to do it in my time, in my way. Come on, y'all. You see, y'all feel me? Y'all feel what I'm saying? That it has to be in, in my time, in my way. And what I used to ask God for was, hey, God bless you, Tina. We pray that you're doing well. Your husband doing great. So what I used to ask God for was a window. I said, I'll be like, Lord, show me a window when I can address this or talk to this person. Because sometimes, you know, you want to just run out and do it, right? Hey, God bless you, Brother Bow. I pray that everything's going well. I pray that your son's well, too. You know, and, and, and there's a lot of times when we just want to run out and do it, right? Proverbs 19 and 2 Right, because we want to resolve it quickly. But Proverbs 19 and 2, let's go there real quick. Y'all, so we, 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 I'm going to get to, we get into the lesson, y'all. We getting there. I'm just, you know, just, I'm, I'm doing, we, it's like we driving in Sunday, Sunday, easy like Sunday morning, right? We just driving. We, we riding on, it's on Wednesday. <laughs> but what happens with some situations, I may be so angry. That's why I got to check myself. I got to check me. Because it makes me, it made me think about Galatians 6 too. So we'll go there too. Because we just talked about how to address things. Uh, I also, I have a, a note. Oh man, maybe I'll share it one day. But it says here, it's not good for a person to be without knowledge. And he who hurries with his feet, acting impulsively and proceeding without caution or analyzing the consequences, sins and misses the mark. That's all right. Let's break this down. Thank you, Lord. It says it's not good for a person to be without knowledge. Every time that you want to address a situation is not the time to address a situation. <laughs> so make sure that you got some knowledge about the right time. You can say the right thing at the wrong time and still be wrong. Come on, y'all. 
There's a time and a place and a way to do things. That's number one. So then you look at this. I got to I got to have some knowledge about when to address it. There are some times and seasons God may tell you not to address something for five years. Don't even address it to the person. There are certain people. God's like, Camp, don't even talk to them. Right. Like talking to them is like talking to this wall right here. Right. Just, you know, having a great conversation with the wall. I can get more out of this wall than I would get out of talking to them. Like God know that like certain like this ain't the time. Right. There's been times when I want to call somebody and I want to say, you know, I've been torn in my heart about something. And I'm like, I want to call him, Lord. And God's like, this ain't the time. Right? Because, see, look, what we don't understand is God know where that person is. See, you want to address this situation. See, you want to address this situation because of where you at. Right? You want to address the situation where you at. Not understanding where they are. When you're thinking about the gospel, the gospel is always others focused. It can't just be about me. I'm seeking, I'm seeking love, but this is love for us, unity for us. And I don't want to keep living in a matter that causes me to be mad, upset, losing weight, gaining weight, hair falling out. Come on, y'all. I need to be able to address this. But I can't do it in my emotions. See, when I'm a, let's go back to Proverbs 19:2. When I'm when I'm emotional. I'm a hurry with my feet because I'm trying to hurry up and get this thing done. Come on, y'all. I've been there where I'm trying to, I say something wrong time. It could be the right thing. I may say it in the wrong way. A lot of times I'm very guilty of saying, of doing that. <laughs> Yolanda tell you, <laughs> she's like, yeah. <laughs> Hampa send me some crazy text. <laughs> All right. I'll say the wrong thing at the, the wrong way. All right. So then we do that. Because when we're acting impulsively, it says here that we act impulsively and proceed without caution. I got to think about what's the, you know, in the military, we're talking about second and third order effects. Like what's the second and third order effects? What's the ripple effect to what I'm going to do right here? See, when I don't analyze that and think and move with, with, with caution, I can miss the mark, y'all, right? I missed the mark. I missed the mark for what God would have me to do. Amen? So that's one way for us to, to deal with it. Another way, I'm going to say, let's go to Galatians 6. Galatians 6, 1 and 2 is not like exact, but let's take a little bit out of this. It's not the exact it's not exact to this message exactly, but but there is something that we can kind of like a little piece of this that we can take out of this. So let's kind of let's look at this and then kind of and then we'll, we'll go back to the message. So it says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any sin, now we're addressing the sin, not so much as an offense to you. You who are spiritual, who are responsive to the guidance of the spirit. Y'all see that, right? Y'all connect that. Y'all connecting that with me back to what we're talking about with knowledge, right? I'm seeking God about how I should go about something. So let's take that part. If you see that someone sinned against you, right? I'm spiritual. If me who is spiritual, let me get out of my emotions, right? Because as long as I'm in my emotions, Satan had, can have his way, right? Because many, many, many issues have been caused because we've been in our feelings we allow our flesh and Satan to take over. And we wound up causing a whole lot of damage because we won't walk in the spirit. Because we won't simply walk in the spirit. Come on, y'all. Right? Because when we think about fruit of the spirit, one of, one, one of them is patience. Right? It says that in the previous chapter. Galatians 5.22. It says patience is not, you know, when we have the... Um, it says patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting. Oh, is that not a word? That's a whole word in itself. Let me, let me say it again. Not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting. Most of us, including myself, act a plum fool when we wait. <laughs> I, I, I don't, 
I don't wait well. <laughs> I'm trying to learn, <laughs> but I'm not one to wait well. I be wilding while I'm waiting, right? I, that, that's not always my testimony that that I, I waited for God, right? Because I'm angry about something. God tells me like, you can't address it that way or you can't talk to him. So you upset and fuming. So then you trying to find some other way to kind of get out, <laughs> get, get after it. Like I said, I, I, that's me. Y'all, y'all can just laugh at me today. Y'all can say ouch for yourselves. I put myself out there on front street. But, but going back to, to chapter six, see, when I understand this by the guidance of spirit, of spirit, I'm to restore such a person in a spirit of gentleness, not with a sense of superiority or self-righteousness. How many times, brothers and sisters, have someone, has someone offended you and you don't go to them with a spirit of meekness? You go to them with a sense of superiority and self-righteousness. I got the upper hand on you because you've wronged me and you owe me for what you've done. And I must need, need you, right? I need thy, thou, thou knees to bend, right? Kind of like with Joseph, bend the knee, right? I need you to bend the knee and I need you to grovel. Right, that's what we want. We want someone to grovel, to show your sincere, right, repentance, repentant attitude toward what you have done to thine servant of the Lord. Come on, y'all. That's how we be acting. Completely self-righteous, completely with a spirit of superiority over other people. Now, I know I ain't the only person, but for the sake of this message, I'll just put myself out there don't even worry about it. We just talk about me today, right? It, it, this will be good for my healing. <laughs> you better be talking truthful for yourselves. Come on, y'all. You know what I'm saying? But that's where it is. Amen, sister. You know, we got to bend the knee. We got to be humble. And, and, and humility is how we get exalted. But, you know, of course we're doing it. That, you know, in that case it was the wrong way. But we need to do it the right way. All of us need to bend the knee right? We need to bend the knee toward Christ to humble ourselves and humble our, our, our attitude towards situations. We all need to bend the knee and not tell someone else that they need to bend the knee. Come on, y'all. That's how we act. That's why we don't get, that's why we never get to resolving situations. That's why conflicts exist in families for years and decades, because we refuse to go to someone, you offended me, and you want me to come to you with a spirit of meekness? Oh, you, you crazy. I ain't coming to you with no spirit of meekness, but why do I come to them? When I understand, let's go back to knowledge, right? Let's go back to Proverbs 19 and two. Hold on, let me get there. Let's go back to 19 and two. Why do I, do, I told y'all, y'all do this for you. You get, you get conflict, conflict resolution is for me. And it's for you. It's not a like, look, I do want to seek love, right? What talks about, you know, when you think about, you know, who he who seeketh love, you know, he who covers a, a, a transgression seeketh love, right? I'm I'm trying to to seek love, but I'm trying to make sure I'm good. Some of us aren't aren't good in on the inside. Some of us in our heart of hearts, man, we go inside, man, it, it's a mess in there, and we know it. But we got to walk in with knowledge. We cannot go after situations in our emotions, in our flesh. Because 10 times out of 10, we make a mistake in that process. Unless we keep our mouth shut and say nothing. <laughs> That's the only way, right? You be in your flesh and, and you ain't going to do no sin. Like, I'm going to just shut up. Because there's been some times I've been emotional and I'm like, yeah, the baby, the baby getting her thing in too. Right. So then uh, let me put there the baby, the baby getting her, her little, her little, her thing in. Then maybe that's her. Amen. <laughs> but we, we missed the mark because we're too emotional about what somebody's done to us. But what we do is y'all, look, this is, this is, this is how we going to address this situation. This is how we, this is how we going to get some freedom. Come on, come on. Let's go to, let me, let me find, I'm, I'm in Philippians. Let's go to Philippians four and six. 
I know this isn't part of the lesson. It, well, it's part of the lesson, but it's not part of the questions. Yeah, y'all bear with me. All right, y'all. If y'all have a question or something, let me go look on Zoom real quick. If y'all got a question or something, y'all y'all hit me up. Y'all let me know. It's just my lovely wife, who's so fine. <laughs> she gonna be like, "Tell me." Okay, so in Philippians, so if you are, and this is talking for me too, when I am emotional. And I want to flip out on somebody and I want to address a matter the way I want to address it. Right there. There's a way that God will address it. And there's a way that I would address it. So the, the goal is for us to align with the same way that, you know, God want to address. It. We want to be aligned. We don't want to be over here. We don't want to be over there. We want to be right in line. The way that Jesus would handle it, we want to make sure Jesus would. Remember the, way, the, the armbands? What would Jesus do? I got one somewhere around here. I know Darius wears here often. Right. What would Jesus do? Right. Jesus wouldn't handle a lot of the situations the way that we handle them. Come on. Especially in these moments when somebody offends us. So it says here, Philippians four and six. Now, if you follow us on the you, if you follow us on you version, this was one of the scriptures for today. Right. Now, let me put in my shameless plug. I wish I had a picture of it because if I had a picture of it, I'll post it in here. I don't have one readily available, but if you are, if you are in need or searching for a daily devotional, amen, you can follow us on version. amen, version is the, the Bible app, we have, we've been running this, I've been running it for years, whereas daily devotionals, I, you know, we just get you connected with a daily devotional, and then we also have, this year, we have a daily devotional, typically about five minutes, no more than 10. And then we have a daily reading. We're reading through the Bible. So we do both of those. I've been doing both for some years and now I just introduced that, shared it with the whole community here. But if that's something that you're interested in, download the Bible app, send me Hampley a third and a message. And I would love to be able to get you connected on there. And then we, then you have opportunity to have a daily word. If, the, if you're struggling or like, hey, I need to find something, then let's get connected in the word. Don't matter if you're with our church or not. You know, you're 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 a believer and we're all one in Christ and part of one family. Amen. OK, so let's go back to Philippians 4, 6, Philippians 4, 6. This is how we're going to address this, because a lot of times when someone offends us, we're super mad. And we repeat the matter. Right. And the more we repeat it in our minds, the angrier we get the more settled we get. Come on, y'all. And, and let me let me share with y'all one more scripture. Um, yeah. All right, so there's a, bro, there, it talk, there's a scripture in Proverbs 18 and 19. It says, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong, a strong city, and their contentions are like bars of a castle. Let's go there. Hold on. Proverbs 18, 9. Let's get there. And then, then we'll go there real quick, and then we'll they'll take it back over to Philippians 4. I, I'm not going to forget about that. But this is why most of us in prison, most of us got, got jump, orange jumpsuits on. That, that'd be the problem. Y'all with me? Most of us are lifers. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Most of us are in the pen. We in, we in the, we in the, we in the self-pen in the Lee Penitentiary. Right, whatever your last name is, penitentiary. That's where you at. You done put yourself in jail. Come on, y'all. It says here, Proverbs 18, 19. It says, let me add it to the broadcast real quick. It says, a brother offended, I'm reading from the Amplified, is harder to win over than a fortified city. And contentions separating families are like bars of a castle. When you have bars of a castle, nobody gets in. And you, sir, ma'am, don't get out. That's what offense does to us. Think, think about all the negativity that comes about. I mean, think about all the negative things I addressed in the last 39 minutes about what offense, holding on to offenses and unforgiveness does to a person, does to you, your body, right? It, it traps you. And because you keep repeating the matter, you get angry and angry every time you do. Come on, I know I ain't the only person. And you become offended and you don't want to ever resolve it, right? It's never, you know, you never want to seek love. You, even if the person came back to you, nothing they would ever be able to do would be enough. 
because you're offended. It's harder to win over a person than a fortified city. That's why you got to go back to God. There are certain people that God told me that this person ain't going to forgive you for years. Oh, it'd be a long, God told me about 1% of earth, like it'd be a long time before they forgive you. That means there's certain topics I don't just go at them about because God's going to take them, right? Because see, God loves them so much that God wants them, wants, wants to deal with them and dress them, but he's going to do it in his time, his way, only the way that he can. That's why we can't just be running out to go do something. See, we see this. What we do is we'll run out and say, well, Lord, I asked them. I said, I forgive them. I said, they were sorry. I said, I was sorry. I addressed the matter. They ignored me. Well, maybe they offended and this wasn't the time, but you think you did your due diligence because you confronted them. So then you never want to deal with it again. But the gospel is all about others focused. Just like when it talks about in the scriptures, like if you about to present your gift to the altar and remember that your brother has an offense against you, you go and, and, and restore that situation. Come on, y'all. So what we're trying to pre prevent from ourselves is the situation where we become offended. So let's go to Philippians 4 and 6 and then we'll then. And we'll address that. I, I may not really address some of the other parts in that because it just kind of says, okay, this is how you deal with it. All right, so Philippians 4 and 6. Let me get back there. It says, I'm going to read from Amplified. It says, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance, in situation, not in a couple of situations, not when your back is against the wall, not when you think like the bottom's about to fall out and you don't know way out, not when, you know, when, uh, you know, the, the, your life is on the line. It says every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests made known to God. And, and the peace, right? So then by me emptying myself of all the stuff, the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which guards your heart, stands guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, is yours. So then this is how I begin to move forward. Right. This is how I have to be able I have to get this out of me so that I can address it going back to Galatians six in a matter that's spiritual. So I'm going to come to God and give him my junk. Some of us don't want to tell God the junk. He knows it's there, but we don't want to tell him. Right. We over on the side of our beds on our knees. That's the we bend in our knee, but we we bend in the knee, but not bend in the knee. So we on the side of our bed, oh Lord, we just thank you, Father, for this day. And we just want you to bless our families and our children and give us a good night. Amen. And we think because we didn't pray some nice little prayer that sounded good that we all right. No. What you need to do, sir, ma'am, is take a page out of David's book, out of, the, out of the Psalms. Go take you a drive somewhere. Go drive and go tell God how you really feel about something. <laughs> Like you need to go tell God how you where you really at. And I tell people all the time, like that's that's the beginning. Not just be just meditating on what it is, like write it out, talk it out. Like, God, this is where I'm at. If you hate somebody, Lord, I hate that person. I hate them. I hate what they've done. I hate what they said. I hate what they all this. I hate who they are. I hate them. Tell him. See, some of y'all don't want to even be honest. Some people too religious. Some of y'all so religious, you won't even tell God that. But that's where you at, and he know you there. But you are unwilling to, to, to be truthful with yourself about how you feel about somebody. How in the world are you supposed to be free from something that you won't even admit to? There's supposed to be freedom in Christ because you too worried about what that looked like. Because I don't want to be honest about where I'm at. Like, no, Lord, I hate that person. And if I had the means to, I would like to see the last bit of breath of their body. 
right? When you're talking about somebody giving up the ghost, I want to see that. Oh, that's what the last breath in their body look like. Oh, thank you. Right? Some of us feel like that. Some of us don't want to deal with the people that's in our lives, but we won't be honest with it. Some of y'all hate y'all spouses. Some of y'all hate y'all children. Some of y'all hate the people you got to work with. Some of y'all hate y'all jobs. But then there y'all are at church talking about, oh, God, thank you, Lord. We, this, we, I'm so thankful for my job. You hate it. So tell God that you do. So because what happens is, and what you notice, when you notice in the Psalms, when David be like, kill him, kill him, cut him, you know, this is where I'm at, do him in. By the end of the psalm, he's always talking about, yeah, baby, you go, you preach that thing. Zamora preaching. Look at her. Look at her. She, she getting her numbers in. <laughs> right? But when you, when you look at that and you begin to empty yourself out, when you see David emptying himself of all his thoughts, by the end of the psalm, almost every one of them is like praise. Because when you get out all of that junk, when you write it out, when you talk it out, when you give it all to God, laying aside every weight and sin. Come on, there's like a dance, right? Shrug, shrug shows off. Get that stuff off, right? You know, I'm trying to get this off of me. I'm wilding, <laughs> right? Get this off of me because I want to be free. Because Jesus is there to take it, right? It talks about it in, in, in Matthew 10. Come to me, all who are burdened and heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. Some of us aren't restless. We're restless in our spirits. Our soul ain't at ease because we have unforgiveness and trauma and all these things in our hearts, in our minds, swimming in. We won't release it. We can't act religious, y'all. Religion going really to kill some of y'all. Early, y'all going to be standing before Jesus and he's going to be like, what y'all doing here? What you doing here so early? I ain't planning for you to be here for another 25 years. I mean, but you you messed around and did all this other, you know, you wanted to hold on to all that pain. So, all right, here you go. You we here now. You know what I'm saying? We got to get rid of that stuff. So you got to have those moments of honesty with God. You don't have to have that with a certain person in, in the world, right? If God gives that to you, then, hey, man, praise God. Some of y'all may not get that. Then that means you you driving. Right. I used to do that. All, well, I do it a lot now, but I used to do it a lot when I was in Germany, man. I'd be doing like 140 <laughs> on the Audubon, just yelling. I remember one day, man, I was so, man, I was so mad. Oh my gosh. But I was, I mean, I was zooming around the, the Audubon with that, with my car, right? Mad, yelling at, yelling at God about where I'm at because I need to get it out of me. Because when I do this, right? See, it says no being anxious or worried about anything. How many, how many of us are worried about a lot of stuff? We're worried about a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Just even beyond, you know, just even just if y'all give me just a second for a rabbit trail. But even just beyond unforgiveness, we're, we are worried and anxious about many things that we never go to God about. We never talk about. We never say anything about it. We silently suffer. And Jesus is like, why? why? Why would you silently suffer? I'm right here. I live in you. I said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I've given you like a, a ton of different things. I've given you ways and means to, to be able to, to release. Right? Yeah, Sistina, like to release all the stress. I, I, I did it. But we won't go to him. Like, man, I'm in this too. We won't go. And we live with the trauma, the anger, the frustration, the pain. We live with it. Think about if, like, think about if, if, if there was a, a think about if your body was covered in the labels of your emotions. Right. Most of us be like, I'm too stressed to be blessed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Right. You got all these sayings and different things. But think about it. If it just said like stress, you know, childhood traumas, you know, wrapped around your head. Right. Hurt and pain on the back. It's just labels. If your body was covered with labels that everyone could see. What would people see? What would people read about? Right. The things that we hide from our families, from our spouses. From our coworkers, our bosses. 
the, the pain and the things that we wish that will never be uttered in public. Come on, y'all. It's so much. Man, many of us would be ashamed. Man, we were, we were running high. We would never be outside. If we knew what was on the outside, what was on the inside of us existed for people to see on the outside. But when we look at that, going back to John 10 and 10, that's not the way that Jesus said he came for us to live. Like I said, man, it don't mean that we ain't ever going to go through nothing. But, but even in the midst of what we go through, there's a means and a way to experience an abundance of life. There's a way to go through life where we all enjoy it. And have it in abundance to the over to the full to the overflows. That's where I'm at. That's where that's where I'm at in this season right now. That's where I need. Cause right now, like if I can be a little honest, man, my days run together. Like I I barely know that it was barely remembered that it was it was it was Father's Day. Like I work so much. Like I'm tired. I get home. I'm tired. Like you know, I'm working three jobs. Like today, I went to work, and then afterward, you know, I went to look at two houses. One didn't go so well, right? Because the agent didn't even know the lockbox code to his own house that he listed, right? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and then I'm then like, as soon as I get here, like I got 30 minutes, and then I'm back on again, right? And I'm teaching, and you get tired, right? And you have capacity for only so many things, and because of that, you know, sometimes I get stressed and where like one thing tips me over. So I got to remember, like I have to remember Philippians 4, 6 to 7 because it's a lot. I want to enjoy life. I want to enjoy the life that God's given me. And so many of us don't really stop to think about that. Like, man, like even now, like, like, like for real, I want you to think about that right now. Well, all the stuff you got going on, like even now, Jesus is saying he wants me to enjoy life and enjoy it to the full and have it in abundance to the full, to low full. Even right now, I want you to think about that right now. With, with the drama, whatever drama and chaos you've been thinking about before this message, that the word says, that's why Jesus came. He says he's come to this for that very purpose. How do I experience that? Right, so so when we look at getting to that place, that's a place that's called the joy of the Lord. And if you follow me on Facebook, you saw I shared one of those messages. I think that was the Oklahoma based softball team that kind of spoke about that. They're like, how do you get through this? This whole year of all this stuff, the joy of the Lord. So how do I, that's been one of my questions in the season. Like how do I exchange my pain, my anger, my frustration, the happiness, right? Because a lot of us seek happiness. And happiness is is it just is always fluctuating. Joy is stagnant, right? Joy, I mean it's constant, right? It's just this constant, it's there, it's there, right? But if I'm trying to be happy, man, I'm all over the place. I'm 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 like a boat in the middle, like a tugboat. I'm like a tugboat in the middle of the ocean during a storm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like this. I'm up. I'm down. I'm like oh, I'm getting seasick. I'm all over the place. I'm everywhere. But I want to be steady, right? I I want to be where, when you look at the fruit of the spirit, like that's where I'm at, and I'm not moved by all the, like, it's not like I don't experience them. When you look at David, Joseph, you know, you think about these great, you know, we think, talk about the, the cloud of witnesses, right? The, they're among the cloud of witnesses, these, these men and women that have done great things through Christ, right? In his name, and, and they lifted up the banner of faith, like to point to Christ, to give us inspiration and hope about what's possible in the now and in the future. It's like, Lord, how do I stay there? Like they recognize the pain that they're in. Even Paul, Paul would talk about that. Like even like to the point of death, like he felt like, 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 man, like we're like, feel like to the point of death, but we encourage themselves in the Lord. There's, there's something that I, I want to be there where I'm not always just stressed and stressed out. Like, man, we got a lot going on right now, man. Like I told y'all, when we tell our testimony, y'all going to be like, man, how's y'all still living? Like God keeping us, but I want to be kept even better. And some of that is on me. I want the abundant life. 
even in the midst of all the stuff we got going on, I want to enjoy the life that God's given me and not be mad and upset because things don't go my way. Because a relationship didn't work out the way that I thought it would. Because people didn't come through. Right, a lot of us are offended. We we get offended at people. We're angry with people because they say something to us. They talk to us any kind of way. And, you know, Tina, you know, like man, people talk crazy to to realtors. Man, people say some of the craziest stuff to me, and I'd be like, man, in this moment, I gotta be professional. I can't wild out. I, you acting a donkey don't mean I need to act a donkey, but I sure do because what you said was crazy, <laughs> right? And so I gotta. So then you feel like you just gotta take it. But you don't have to take it. What you do is you take it to God. And that's what I'm trying to learn in this season. So that I don't just live in this this perpetual state of anger, unforgiveness, stress, anxiousness. Come on, y'all. Some of us live in this perpetual cycle, unending cycle. We see no relief. Some of us see no relief. Relief, you can't even picture a world without stress and chaos and drama. You can't even you can't even picture it. You don't even know what that looked like. You don't even like when I read uh John 10 and 10, you're like, man, I I man, that I can't even conceptualize that concept. I I I heard you talk about it, but man, I don't mm -hmm, no. Because we're offended by what people have done to us. We live in a world of full of darkness. But we're lights in the world. So how do we learn how to continue to let our light shine when darkness surrounds us? When darkness seems like it, it, it covers you like a blanket? I know I ain't the only person that ever felt like that. One is going back to Philippians 4, right? Going back to God for every instance. Making sure that we release before we talk to another person. I'm not going to even touch on the rest of the scripture because it's pretty self-explanatory. Because this is something I think we all needed today. I needed this too. But where we get to a place where we say, Lord, I want the abundant life. Come on, y'all. I want the abundant life. And, and God's been calling me to mature. Like, he's been telling me, like, Ham, you need to grow up. Like, there's some areas in my life, God, th this week, God's like, Ham, you need to grow up. You need to be like spiritually mature because in this area, like you are not being mature and you need to grow up. And I need to be able to understand that in this life, there will be tribulations, but I can be of good cheer. Why? Because he's overcome the world. This is temporary and we'll get past it. And I don't have to hold on to this anger. I don't have to hold on to the unforgiveness. There's an abundant life I can spend. I'm, I'm trying to, I want to tap into that now. Well, as soon as I get, I'm telling y'all about it. I mean, it's, it's, we read the scriptures, but I want that too. I want the abundant life because that's what Jesus said he came to give. That's for you. It's for me. Like he came to give that. That's why he came. I'm here for that reason. Right now, we already know. We know we're going to have the abundant life. I told y'all before, when your pinky toe hits heaven, you, you, you're going to be like, it's all worth it. Right? <laughs> when your pinky toe hits it, right? It's going to be all worth it. But in this moment, while I'm living on this earth, I want that experience. And sometimes because of the cares and affairs of life, right? That's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm trying, like I have so much going on that it can cause me to become unfruitful, like the parable of the seeds, right? That's in Matthew 18, right? So because of that, let me make sure that I said, I said it was Matthew 18, but no, it's not Matthew 18. Hold on. Now I'm about to find it. Hold on. <laughs> Now, now I'm at the find it. Matthew 13, I'm sorry. So, but what happens, right? Sometimes I'm in the place where I've allowed so much to happen in my life that I become unfruitful in certain areas, right? There's certain areas of my life, you know, you killing it, right? You Like nobody got to tell you nothing, man. God, you know, God would applaud what you're doing, right? You, you, you the number one. Right. You get the gold star for the day, for the season. And there's other areas of your life where it's like, oh, you need some remedial training. And for me, there's some areas in my life I need some remedial training in. And I've allowed the I'm trying not to allow the tyranny of the urgent 
And that's why, like, man, a lot of these messages that, like, on you version, they be, like, right on time. Like, we just finished that one about the tyranny of the urgent, right? And why, like, the tyranny of the urgent, man, has been getting me. And I've been trying to really, really have more control of my time where I don't allow people to infringe on what I'm already doing, right? Say, a no, no is an anointed word. It's probably one of the no, most anointed words in the English language. No. <laughs> Right. For the Lord is yes and amen. Right. <laughs> For me, it's no. <laughs> I'm going to give somebody a no. Right. There's power in, in creating boundaries based on your calling, your purpose. Come on, y'all. There's a lot of times I say no to a lot of good stuff because I know I'm overwhelmed. I'm at, I'm at capacity. Some people like, you know, as a realtor, people are like, hey, can I call you like in an hour? Like, no. Like, hey, you know, I'm like, well, hey, I'm, I'm available later on this afternoon. That's, I mean, I'm free. Because I don't want infringes on my time. Because I'm, I'm here or I'm there or I have family time. Right? I tell y'all, man, us having church on Saturday is a, a tremendous blessing. Because Sunday we completely shut down. And I love it. Our whole family shut down. Everybody shut down. Like, even when, if we have a mega church, it will be on Saturdays. Because everybody's shutting down. I mean, it's been a blessing. It's been a complete blessing to have one day that you do nothing. I mean, it's been a complete, utter blessing for us, completely. And we need these moments and these boundaries because what happens is because we're so overwhelmed, like I talked about a little bit earlier with the dedicated denial of service attacks that has, hackers do, we're overwhelmed with so much information, so much life, one little thing that happens tips us over. And then we just... We get angry, upset, we blow up on people because we're stressed, like Tina was talking about. But we have to understand where we are, y'all, and we got to start writing that stuff out, talking to God, getting it out so that we can address things in a healthy manner. There's a healthy way to have conversations with people that have offended us and that just kind of bring it back full circle, that have offended us and hurt us. But oftentimes, we don't want to talk to them because we're still in our emotions and feelings about what occurred. We have to be able to go to God so that we can get insight and knowledge so that we can deal with it from a spiritual setting with wisdom, with patience, walking in the fruit of the spirit so that we'll know the right time and place to be able to address things because we're seeking love. We're seeking unity and togetherness, right? Because there's one body and we don't want nobody to be lost because Jesus don't want nobody to be lost. He ain't come for people lost. This is he loved the world. And it's not his will that any person be lost. So let me make sure I do my part so that I'm not creating offenses in other people's lives so that they could be. Amen. What y'all got for me before we close? I appreciate y'all being with us today. Like I said on, on Sunday, if the Lord says the same, it will be a Father's Day message. Unlike anything I've ever heard. <laughs> we'll use an example of someone in the Bible that probably is not being used, been used for about, I'm sure somebody's used it. I mean, I'm, I can't say I'm the only person. But um, um, but no, we'll, we'll talk about that. So if you are here locally, we will be here locally. If you're in San Antonio, Saturday at 5 p.m. at the uh, a, a recovery place. That's at 2420 Freedom Drive. That is in Unit D. We tape the message, but then on Sunday mornings at 10, you know, you'll see us. It'll look like it's live, just like right now. It looks like it's brand new live. So we typically tape it. And then once I once we tape it on Saturday, I will edit it. I will put it on, on YouTube Saturday night, and then I will play it. Then we'll also play it on Sunday. So we appreciate y'all. Uh, we thank you all. Just keep us in prayer, right? We, we're trying to be faithful to what God's called us to do. And... A lot of times, y'all, I'm going to say this. I'm a little over. I I'm going to say this. But sometimes God knows that you got a lot going on in your plate. And he still tells you to move forward anyway. Don't. Like, even for me, like, I want to take some stuff off my plate. And God's like, Ham, you can do all the things. All the stuff you got going on, you can do them all. There's a grace, right? I got to find, right? It's like a radio frequency. You got to gotta tune in to the frequency, like AM, right? Some of y'all with the, some of y'all remember them, them old AM. Let me let me say every time the, the my baby say something, I, I want to make sure she gets some shout outs. So shout out to the baby, 
right? So we want to make sure we dial in the AM channel, right? We're like, you know, making sure. So there's a grace that God gives you to get those things. So sometimes, y'all, in the midst of us having crazy drama going on in our lives, God be calling you higher. He'd be calling you to more. He'd be like, love more, give more, do more. And you'd be like, Lord, how? He like, there's a, see, he trying to get you. When you talk about faith to faith, that's where he trying, he trying to take you to the next level. But in order to do that, we got to get out of this thinking. We got to empty ourselves of these things and say, Lord, I'm ready to learn what you got to teach me. Father, how I'm to live the way that pleases you and accomplishes the purposes that you place in my life. Amen. All right, y'all, what y'all got? Anything for me? Like I said, I appreciate y'all joining us. Um, I appreciate y'all and um, and uh, continuing to walk with us, you know, in this in this season of our lives. We pray that God is blessing you with the word and song and uh, that Yolanda and I have continued to labor with you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, please feel free to reach out to us. Don't ever think there's a time that we're too busy, right? We're still servants. When you talk about being a servant, I didn't preach like 10 messages in this message, but when you talk about being a servant, when you talk about serving others, oftentimes you think about a servant and someone that's master over you, you will serve people at a time of inconvenience to you. And a lot of times when God calls us to serve other people, right, it, it, it's going to be an inconvenience to your time, your resources, right? It's going to be inconvenience to you. But it doesn't mean that you can't go forward to be able to still love and to share and to give. We're called to be servants, right? We're called to give of ourselves. So don't ever feel there's a time like, oh, I don't want to bother y'all. You better call. You in some trouble? You better reach out. <laughs> you better reach out to, to one of us. You a woman, you reach out to my wife. If, you re if, you're, if, you're, if you're, you know, ladies, if you reach out to our, our standard page, typically I'll see it first. And then ladies, if, if it's lady, I'd be like, Yolanda, here you go. <laughs> right? But we want to help you. We want to walk with you. And that's our call. Right now, God told us to walk with the ones and twos. So we're not trying to, we're not doing a whole bunch of evangelistic efforts and trying to bring people in church. Like, no, man, we have capacity right now. We want to walk with the people we're walking with, the, the people God is placing in our lives. There may come a time when we're going to do all this stuff and, and want to grow church if God gives us that. But right now in this season, God's like, ones and twos. So we're doing what we can handle right now with all the other stuff we got going on. So, but if y'all need something, man, y'all reach out. We, we, we are here to help. Don't live life alone in a bubble. Don't suffer in silence, right? Reach out, reach out to us. And we would love to be able to walk with you. Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this time you've given us, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you'll help each and every one of us, Lord God. Each of us are struggling in some way, shape, or form, Lord God. We're struggling with stress and anger, Lord God. We're anxious about things. We're worried about so much, Father. So much on our heart, Lord God. It's just, just bruised it, Lord God. Crushed us, Lord God. We feel the weight, Lord God, of life. Just seems like it's just bearing down on us, Lord God, where we can't breathe and we're suffocating, Father. We need your help today, Father God. Help us, Lord God, to lay aside those weights and sins, Lord God, that's just kept us bound, kept us chained, kept us in darkness. We want to see the light, Lord God. We want to live in the light. We want to experience the abundant life, Lord God. We want to have it to the full, Father. Help us, Lord. I pray, Lord God, for your children that you love, Lord God. You love them so much, Father. Just keep loving on them, Father God, letting them know that they don't have to live in sin. They don't have to continue to live with stress. They don't have to live with the trauma. They don't have to live with the pain. They can be free. They can be free. Help them, Lord God. Show them the pathway to freedom in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Help us to grow in you so that we can be one in unity as you and the Father are one. Father, we love you. And we thank you so much for this time you've given us, Father. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, we pray these prayers. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. We pray that, uh, that God will keep you all. Like I said, keep us in prayer. God bless you, Wayne. Pray that you're doing well. We got the whole message, like like not the whole world in, in his hands, like Jesus, was, like we sing in the song, Little Kid, Children's Church. <laughs> but but we do have, um, we do have our, our messages. Amen. Um, 
uh, online. So please feel free to uh, to check that out. So until the next time, y'all, y'all keep looking to the hills. We love you all. Just pray that God will continue to keep you. Don't be suffering in silence. Amen. You go out. You you get this thing out. You get your freedom. Right. Get your abundance. That's yours. Joy, yours. Joy, and Lord, is yours. Go get it. Amen. There's a little bit of work that we got to do, but it can be yours in Jesus' name. Amen. So until the next time, y'all keep looking to the hills. God bless you. Love you all. Y'all take care.